Hello everybody, today I propose to have a look at the nose curve. The nose curve is related to voltage stability in power systems. Here is a typical nose curve where the voltage over the load is drawn as a function of the power through the load. Voltage stability is one of the three pillars of power system stability and they have already been discussed in other videos. Here are the very basic parameters and models needed to draft the nose curve. There is a source and there is a load. And between the source and the load we have a reactance which is the source reactance and possibly some line reactances. The load may have a constant cosine phi and it is variable. The nose curve is an interaction between the variable load, the source voltage E, the load voltage V and the voltage across the, the reactances between the source and the load. The voltage across XT is directly proportional to the current through the load. How is now the simplistic model connected to reality? This is a part of a real network where we have various power generation plants in different locations. Then we have loads and we have lines between the power generation plants and the loads and each one of the generation plant ha has its own reactants. It is now possible to regroup all the generation plants into one. Then we can reduce all the lines. And so at the end of the day we have a very simple big mega power generation plant combining all the plants we have seen before. We have one connection between this generation plant and a load at a specific location. And we want to know now the voltage curve over the power at this specific load. Let's see now how the model for such a simplified arrangement looks like. We have a three phase system, but since the case is symmetrical, we can look at only one phase. Here is now the simplified model, which I have already shown previously. And let's see now how this interaction works so that we get this nose curve. I need now the arrows of all the voltages and the currents. So this is voltage E, voltage V and so on. The first example is with a resistive load only. We see that as long as the load is very small or the resistance is very high, it's the same thing. The current flowing th through XT is very small, that means the voltage drop across XT is very small, meaning that the source voltage and the load voltage is basically the same, as you can see on this arrow diagram. If we now start to increase the load, meaning decrease the resistance, you see how the angle between the voltage at the load and the voltage at the source start to increase because we have now suddenly a voltage drop across XD and that means that the current, because the current is increasing. I do the same thing as before now, but this time I draw the voltage as a function of 1 over R meaning that if the resistance at the load is very high, I'm at zero here, and if the resistance is very small, I get to the right side of this graph. So let's do the game. You see how the voltage is decreasing, and finally it collapses. Again, I repeat the same thing, but this time I also draft the current across the load. So the current starts very small and then grows more and more. We have now the curve of the real power through the load, which is the multiplication of the voltage across the load times the current through the load. The final step needed to be done in order to get the nose curve is that instead of printing the voltage over the impedance at the load, meaning this resistance, I print the voltage over the power at the load. This is what I can see here. This is not a typical nose curve. As before, I vary the load, but this time I get the nose curve, as you can see here. Here I am now on the no return point. This is the point where I will lose stability because I can evacuate less electrical power than I feed mechanical power into the generation. The shape of the nose curve strongly depends on the cosine phi of the load. 
and also this point of no return will change accordingly. Here you can now see how the nose curve depends on the power factor of the load. We have here three cases. This is more an inductive load. And uh, here we have, and you can see as soon as we cross this no return point at the edge of the curve, the voltage collapses, meaning that the generation loses grip. Here we have now just a resistive load. You can see that the two switches to the capacitor and to the inductor are open. And uh, finally, we have a capacitive load with a power factor 0.95 capacitive. And also here, the same thing applies. As soon as I cross the point of no return, I lose the grip and the system would collapse. Here is now an example of what can happen if uh, the system characteristics are changing. For example, I'm already far advanced in my power delivery to the system and suddenly I lose a line. Let's see what happens then. So at the moment I still have uh, both lines to the load uh, intact, but then I may lose one of the lines and then immediately I change the, the system characteristics, the nose curve changes and I lose control over my system. So this is a blackout situation. This is now an example on the simulator. You see a generator. That is our model we used before. Now I have two lines in parallel and if I'm relatively close to the tipping point with the power. And if I lose now one of the parallel lines, parallel lines you see how the generator gets accelerated more and more uncontrolled. As usual, I recommend to go to the simulator under this address and uh, learn by doing yourself.